Hello there, so maybe my expectations are too high. I feel like explaining different mapping concepts across multiple videos is enough. New mappers should be able to connect the dots and apply those mapping concepts to just about anything in mapping. Yet it seems like that doesn't really happen. A question I get asked fairly often is whether or not I can make a video talking about jumps, to which I always respond no. I've already explained how to handle everything about jumps by going over various mapping concepts already, and so a video specifically about jumps would consist of me repeating that same information. However, after seeing the thought process some mappers have behind jumps, and how it's used as justification for poor mapping decisions, I thought otherwise. There might be something worth talking about related to the concepts behind jumps. Before that though, I'll help out anyone confused by recapping those basic concepts. Relatively large spacing between any two objects is a jump, and you definitely know that already. This is a jump between circles, this is a jump to a slider, and this is a jump after a slider. When you hear people talking about jumps in general though, they're usually referring to consecutive half-beat circles, leaving out sliders altogether. These are conventional jumps. Rhythmically, they're simple enough for someone who doesn't even play Osu to understand. But in other aspects of mapping, there's hopefully more ideas utilized that do give them complexity. The number one thing to avoid when implementing jumps is randomly placing objects. There's always methods to apply logic to jumps through a number of basic mapping concepts, and ultimately to relate them to the music. The easiest of these concepts to understand is spacing emphasis. Conventionally, spacing emphasis is handled by contrasting individual weak sounds and strong sounds with small spacing and large spacing. If those same weak and strong sounds occurred both in calm and intense sections of a song, those in the calm section would ordinarily be spaced lower than those in the intense section. Technically, if a map's spacing is organized in the way I just described, this stronger sound is emphasized more than this weaker sound. But you'd never be able to really tell that it's stronger because the contrast is so low. They feel essentially the same during gameplay because there's so little of a difference. With high contrast though, you can look at these and easily tell which are the stronger sounds. And of course, you can feel those differences too. Following that logic, equally strong sounds that occur back to back would be better off not having any drastic spacing differences. Clarity is important, both for showing contrast and showing a lack of contrast. Without it, spacing would essentially feel random, and that's the biggest concern I have with jumps. However, I think a lot of mappers handle spacing emphasis fairly well. Jumps get a bit more abstract when talking about other concepts though, like visual organization. While there are tons of ways to organize maps around different visual styles, they all have the same purpose, forming a visual connection between all objects. The most conventional way of creating visual connections involves basic patterns. Anything easily recognizable could be considered a pattern, such as the various types of symmetry and repetition. Songs are composed through repeating sounds and phrases, and visuals can represent that easily. By organizing jumps in a visually similar way, players can form a connection between that visual style and that section of the music. When a song goes into a different section, different patterns or a different visual style can be used to represent the change in the music. Much, much better than a disorganized mess of circles, which is what I sadly see a lot of maps doing. By forming basic visual connections and relating them to the music, jumps won't be random, which as I've already said, is the biggest concern I have. So, okay, spacing, check. Visuals, check. There's a good amount of thought behind those, but let's be honest. What most of you are probably interested in is how jumps feel to play. Their flow. With spacing kind of covered already, flow is mostly about angles, how it feels to snap or smoothly move between objects. In most maps, flow represents music in a way that focuses on a song overall, rather than individual objects as spacing would. By continuously using one type of flow throughout a section of a song, jumps can represent that section's repeated elements. And then, when the song's repeated elements change, flow can change to reflect that although most mappers don't. The most conventional way to handle flow with jumps is what players prefer, sharp angles with smooth, circular flow. Conventional jumps may not be too interesting, but at least they're designed to give a specific feeling during gameplay. Better than haphazardly forcing different types of movement without regard for a song, that's for sure. They technically aren't random. As I've already said too many times before, being random is the biggest problem I have with jumps. But the second biggest problem I have with jumps is how mappers justify them. 
Okay, that can mean a lot of things. Let's be clear here. I'm not talking about silly stuff like PP mapping or jumps used when they rhythmically don't fit a song. What I'm specifically concerned with is how mappers justify random aspects of their jumps through technicalities. There's three main aspects of mapping through which normal jumps can be organized. Spacing, visuals, and flow. Their purpose? To solve my biggest concern. They ensure jumps are not randomly placed. Technically speaking though, what does it really mean for jumps to be random? Like, everyone already knows that randomly placed objects are bad. This is not news in any way. If maps could be arbitrarily placed objects, a program could generate coordinates based off a song's waveforms, and Osu would end up being the anime version of Audio Surf. Mappers exist to make sure something that horrid never happens. Mappers create maps far more interesting than a program ever could through logical ideas reflective of the music. The extent of that logic, though, is where some people have me concerned. Take this scenario, for example. I, a modder, am a bit concerned with these jumps. Spacing-wise, there's very little contrast, not enough to notice the differences between distinctly different sounds. Definitely not. It's also not very well organized visually. I can see some ideas, but they're not really developed, which doesn't allow for many clear visual connections. I don't think this is very good for a map because object placements have a fair bit of randomness to them, and I can't tell how they relate to the song. So I explain my thought process and tell the mapper to try to make his intentions for spacing emphasis and and visuals clearer. The mapper responds to my mod. He says, oh, you do bring up some good points, but I'll have to decline. You see, my main focus for this map was flow. My jumps play very well with their sharp angles, and so my object placements are definitely not random. That being said, I don't think it's necessary to be precise with spacing and visuals. Anyway, thanks for the mod. This guy's an anomaly, I know, but this mindset does exist among average mappers too. Because a map does have logic in some way, mappers feel that their object placements are justified. And because they're technically right about the map not being random, it's a situation where modders end up saying, eh, fair enough, movement is consistent. And that's where the argument ends. As I already said, there are three main elements of mapping which make up conventional jumps. Spacing, visuals, and flow. Utilizing one or two does mean object placements aren't random, but it also leaves out the reason why there are three distinct elements here. They all matter. Conventionally, each has its own purpose in reflecting the song, and so each is a vital aspect of designing jumps. In my opinion, leaving out any aspects undermines the reason why a map shouldn't be random. But that raises the question, how exactly does someone integrate all these ideas while still creating a cohesive map? They all serve different purposes, so having them work together doesn't seem that easy. Well, I've sort of hinted at the way mappers conventionally do this already. Spacing and flow are based around movement. They rely on feeling, and that isn't a very precise thing. Players can't tell the difference between two spacings or two different angles unless there's a distinct contrast between them. That means both of these mapping elements can be applied using whatever concepts a mapper wants, and then slightly adjusted for the sake of visual organization. For example, this feels essentially the same as this. Nobody would ever notice a difference during gameplay. However, this gives a completely different impression than this, and I shouldn't need to explain why. Adjusting object placements slightly for the sake of visuals will have next to no impact on spacing and flow, so there's no reason not to consider all of them. So yeah, I really think jumps should have reasoning beyond the bare minimum of technically not being random. I'd love it if more maps could go beyond just the conventions of basic jumps too, but that might be asking for too much. Anyway, thanks to these guys for supporting this video, and I'll see you next week.